to find. There are in all three separate tools for pitch that work independently of one another. Precisely because these tools work independently, the vibrato doesn't get lost when you move the pitch center, and vice versa. So you can perfect intonation without it sounding artificial. And here's how the three tools work. For each note, the inspector displays a pitch center, which is determined by a new musically weighted algorithm in Melodyne 5. If a note's not quite in tune, the resulting blob will be offset slightly. When you move the note with the pitch tool, it skips at first by semitones, but the offset is retained. To ignore the grid, use the Alt key. Now you can also change the offset. The note name and offset can also be typed in directly. Double click and notes snap to the grid. You can do this with one note or several notes at once. And what works with melodies also works with chords. In the case of a guitar, finger by finger, so to speak, on the fretboard. Use Melodyne then, not just to improve takes, but also to change the chords. You determine which pitches are and are not possible destinations for melodies or chords using the pitch grid. With a chromatic setting, as we've seen, blobs snap to whichever pitch is nearest, with all the notes of the piano keyboard, black or white, in play. If you choose key, the background in the note editor is redrawn. Now, the white lanes indicate the pitch of notes belonging to the current key, or tonality, and when you start moving blobs around, they skip over any gray lanes and snap to the nearest white one, so the tonality is respected. Melodyne identifies the key automatically. It's shown here. And also in the key track, if it's open. When it is, you can enter other keys and key changes wherever appropriate. If you choose chord, the white lanes indicate the pitches of notes belonging to the current chord. Only three per octave in this case, because the chord's a simple triad. But these become four in the next bar. Here too, if the grid's active, when you move blobs, they snap to the white lanes, so the notes fit the chords of the song. Now let's look at the note transitions. Here the singer glides from note to note. Try and try. When you change the melody now, the pitch curve at the start of the note and end of the note before adjusts automatically, so the transition remains natural. Try and try. Drag the pitch tool near the end of the note to make the transition shallower or steeper. Pitch variations within a note remain unaltered when the note is transposed. The whole note moves up or down, so you can tune notes perfectly to the grid without them becoming lifeless. If you want to work really fast, the correct pitch macro improves the intonation for you, controlling the pitch tool automatically. It does this by reducing by varying amounts the fine offset of some or all of the selected notes, which and by how much are determined by the slider. At first, only notes that are badly out of tune are affected. With this setting, for example, only the outliers are reined in, while blobs that are only slightly above or below the center of their lanes stay put. As you move the slider further, more and more notes are drawn towards the center, until eventually the fine offset of all the selected notes is zero. If you prefer, the macro can use the key or chord grid for orientation and you can choose whether or not the macro affects notes you've already corrected. Turning to the second pitch tool now, this one's for pitch modulation. For instance, fluctuations within the note. With vocals, this usually means vibrato. And try. Values above 100 increase existing vibrato. Drop towards zero, and any vibrato's reduced. And try while negative values invert the original curve. The third pitch tool addresses the following problem. Often the pitch drifts within the lifetime of a note. A bit flat at the beginning, say, and sharp at the end. 
With the pitch drift tool, you can tilt the curve at will. Try and try. With vocals, this is particularly important. For this reason, you can also correct pitch drift with the macro. Vocals pose a particular challenge to tuning algorithms because singing consists of two different types of sound. Some sounds are pitched, vowel sounds primarily, and voiced consonants. And the frequency of these at each instant is shown by the pitch curve. It is only these sounds, the ones with a clearly perceived pitch, that can ever be out of tune and need correcting. The other sounds, which we call sibilants, and we include here not just S's and CH's, but all unvoiced consonants, plus the sound of the singer inhaling, have no pitch, and therefore no pitch curves. If you wish, you can highlight the sibilants. You'll notice now when you move a blob upwards or downwards that the hatched part, representing the sibilants, moves too. In fact, though, Melodyne doesn't alter the frequencies of sibilants. Exactly the same is true of the human voice, because it's physically impossible to vary the pitch of an S. So, while with conventional plugins or applications you have to put up with sibilants being shifted up or down in an unnatural way, with Melodyne 5, you are spared such problems. Melodyne also leaves formants in their natural places during pitch shifting, which allows you to transpose notes upwards, for example, by large intervals without making the vocalist sound like Mickey Mouse. But you could also shift the formants and not the rest of the note, creating, in the extreme case, a Mickey Mouse effect without transposing the melody. Or, in milder doses, formant shifting can be used to freshen up or add warmth to individual notes. As with the other tools, you can also provide for softer or harder formant transitions at note endings. Finally, you can undo entirely whatever editing you've performed with any one pitch tool or all three, whether of a single note or a whole selection.